guidance and refuge as we approach uh, several topics uh, today that have to do with um, the practice of magic and the practice of uh, political science. Uh, they work together and have worked together for an awful long time. Now, before I jump into the pool, uh, I want to uh, um, ask uh, for a lifeguard. I, I know that uh, there are some students here from uh, Sheikh Imran. Uh, I am not an Islamic scholar. Many people uh, mistake me for that. I may be well spoken in, uh, and maybe even well read in some aspects of Islamic knowledge, but I am not a traditionally trained Islamic scholar. Uh, so uh, I'm likely to make some error in those fields uh, which uh, uh, reference to traditional Islamic knowledge. So uh, please bear that in mind. Uh, think of me not as an academic, but um, I, I like this uh, idea, yes, uh, I'm a, I started, my, my first job was as a newspaper boy, okay? I used to deliver the paper. I'm still delivering the news, okay? Um, so I, I think of me as a ra rather uh, well-read uh, correspondent. That's the best way. Yes, I'm a medically trained doctor. Uh, I was also uh, 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 a ditch digger. <laughs> You know, I delivered milk in London. Yes, I have this great, I was a, a professional musician. I've done a lot of things in my life. So I've become a bit of a eclectic uh, observer uh, of, uh, and participant in the human experience. Um, so bear that in mind as you listen to me, okay? Um, and uh, I, uh, I, what I'm going to try to do is present what Goethe uh, called the archetype. Now, what is an archetype? The archetype of the enemy of Allah is what I'm going to try to present to you. When we speak of archetype, we try to uh, reduce uh, intellectually uh, the uh, uh, various uh, 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 phenomena to their simplest common denominator. So it, 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 the, the, Goethe reduced the, the plant to root, stem, uh, and, uh, and uh, root, the, the stem, and then the, the branches. And there you have your plant. And from there, uh, if you use that as an archetype, you have um, uh, the imagination of every plant under the sun, uh, for example. So I'm going to try and present the archetype and the history of the archetype of the old world order, which has now become the new world order. But before we uh, go into that, I want to remind us of some basic principles which Muhammad uh, uh, reminded everyone on his entrance uh, to uh, Medina. So, uh, I want to, the, I call these the spiritual determinants. They are spiritual laws which sit above sharia, sharia. And uh, these are uh, principles, uh, determinants, which determine the effects of our decisions and our actions as human beings. We have no control over the effects, over the results of these particular laws. Go, uh, go ahead to the first slide here. Uh, Islam, uh, I probably have to get up here and, and, and look now. Um, Islam is not a religion, okay? It is a revealed divine guidance. A lot of people think it's a religion, uh, and that may uh, be so, but the, the term religion simply means the remembrance of God. That's what it means, that's all it means. So Islam is far more than just the remembrance of God. Islam is a, is a revealed, uh, beneficial uh, guidance for beneficial and successful living. It has absolute rules that govern both the uh, effort and outcome over which man has to say, no, what, we have no say over these outcomes. All right? There's heaven, there's hell, there's no in between. We, we can't alter those uh, outcomes. Th those outcomes are eternal, they're fixed, we have no say whatsoever over that. Now, humanists, they like to say that they have, they want to give God their opinion. 
uh, and the rabbis are so arrogant, they have written in their Talmud that when God gets confused, they come and ask them for advice. <laughs> anyway, next slide, please. Uh, I just want to remind you, yeah, these are predeterminants. If you want to talk about predestination, that's what these laws are. They're predetermined. Predetermined effects by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We cannot alter them at all. These are fixed. So what's the result of failure? When we do not follow the guidance, this is the result, harm. This is what happens. It's not the fault of the Zionist. It's not the fault of the New World Order. It's the fault of our leaders and ourselves to not obey, remember, and honor Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and follow the way of Islam. That's what causes this. These ladies are saying, where, oh, where is the God of Muhammad? These are Iraqis. Next slide, please. What happened? We have principles of spiritual determinism, the fear of God, obedience to God, remembrance of God. These are spiritual law. There are spiritual laws which follow under these, uh, these principles of determinism. And there's a positive and there's a negative act of it. Thought and action, thought and action leads, if we do not obey, harm. If we obey, benefit, both here and now and forever. Now, I want to remind us of these principles before I go into the history of the enemy of Allah's cause in the earth. Next slide, please. Ibn Khaldun speaks about these determinants. Next slide. Divine laws affecting men are all for their good. Bad laws come from stupidity, ignorance, and from Satan, the suggestions of Satan. So you have bad law and you have good law. The good laws are divine. And these bad laws are in opposition to the predestination, the predetermination and power of God. These are not my words. These are the words of Ibn Khaldun. Divine laws govern the action of all responsible Muslims. There you have it. One of the most respected scholars, respected scholars in all of Islamic history, telling us divine laws govern us. We don't have any say in the matter. Nothing. Next slide, please. Key words, divine law, good. Inverse, what's the inverse? Inverse means opposite. You obey, you get good. You disobey, you get the inverse, the opposite. You get harm. It's very simple. There's no in between. The humanists like to talk about this gray zone. <laughs> you see? It doesn't exist. That's a false imagination. Allah's predestination, outcome is predetermined. Harm is predetermined. It will not change. If you disobey, harm will come. You cannot change that. Divine laws are determinants. That's why I call it spiritual determinism. Next slide, please. Ibn Khaldun uh, further went into the loss of dominion. Man is a natural leader by virtue of the fact that he has been made a representative of God. Again, these are not my words. These are the words of Ibn Khaldun. When a leader is deprived of his leadership and prevented from exercising all of his powers, he becomes apathetic. Say la vie, whatever. That's apathy. That's apathy speaking itself. You turn on the American te television, you listen to the news correspondents now, and they're saying, oh, whatever. Hey, that's not an Islamic response. That's not an Islamic response. Apathy comes over people when they lose control over their own affairs. And they become dependent upon others. Hope diminishes and weakens the institution. What institution? Their society. Next slide, please. Consequences. Thorough through apathy, when group feeling disappears under the impact of defeat, civilization decreases, businesses decreases, strength dwindles. You become weak. People become victims of anyone who tries to dominate them and prey to anyone who has the appetite. Psychopaths, believe me, they have the appetite. 
If you're apathetic, they will eat you, and they are eating you, and they are eating your children, as I speak. The group that has lost control of its own affairs continues to weaken and degenerate until it perishes. That is the Ummah today. That's what's happening. Because they have not obeyed the principles of spiritual determinism. Next slide. Key words, representative, exercise of power, dominion, apathy, dependent, instruments of others. You have these PowerPoints on the DVD. I'm just going over this, uh, and I'm going to go through a lot of material. I'm not going to go over point by point by point and every, explain every little word. You're intelligent people, otherwise you would not be here. So the PowerPoints are on your DVD. I encourage you, after you listen to me today and you go home, you go back over this so that it gets ingrained in you. Because I prepared this part of the, my th speech today for a course on Islamic leadership. Somebody asked me to do that, and I said, okay, what do they need more than anything else? They need to be reminded, right? Reminded. They don't need another kutbah. You go to the mosque today, you listen to kutbahs, you are bored out of your skull. Yeah? I was told, I gave a kutbah once, I'm not qualified. I was gave a kutbah once because there was nobody else available to do it. I was an ex-Catholic, uh, uh, I mean an ex-Christian uh, uh, minister. I'm used to giving uh, uh, church sermons all the time. You know, I'm not shy of speaking to people. Da -da. <laughs> so I gave the kutbah and uh, everybody shook my hand and they said, that's the best kutbah we ever heard. On Monday morning, the dean told me, you're not supposed to do that. You're not a traditionally uh, trained Islamic scholar. You're not an alim. Well, my contract says I'm an alim with the university. I was sh shocked when I, I saw that. I said, my, hey, I'm just a paper boy here. Now I'm an alim? How did that happen? Huh? I don't know. Anyway, next slide, please. Key words and concepts, representative. That's you and me. Did I, did I do something? Okay. <clears throat> Exercise of power. Dominion. We have lost dominion. Maybe I have some degree of dominion in my household, but it's only because my wife says yes. If she says no, I've lost my dominion. You know, what am I going to do, beat her? No. She has to submit to me because why? I'm doing something for her benefit, okay? For her benefit. When you lose dominion, it's because you're no longer beneficial. You're no longer beneficial to the person that you're trying to exercise dominion over. Apathy, carelessness. The Ummah has become carelessness, especially the Alim, they don't care about real knowledge. We all know that. They're too religious. <laughs> right? Inshallah, inshallah, inshallah. I call this the land of inshallah people. <laughs> uh, apathy, hope diminishes, become weak. Group feeling is lost. These, what the, the, the Arabic is uh, siyasa, siyasa dinya, the group feeling. When apathy creeps in, group feeling is lost, and then what do you do? You jump for the social safety net. You see the social, evidence of the social safety net in this country is the flag waving that I've seen on television in the last two nights. Have you seen that? All the flag waving? Any flag wavers here? I'll show you later that if you're waving the flag, it's because you become a cattle just like the Quran says. You're no longer human, you've become subhuman. Flag wavers have, uh, have uh, uh, they're so apathetic, they have surrendered their independent ability to think consequently and critically, and they become, uh, surrendered themselves to the social safety net that is offered in the deen, the dunya. 
by the enemies of the cause of Allah. So wave your flag all you like until you hit the dirt of the grave. Then you got a problem. <coughs> Victims. When you're victim, <coughs> you're apathetic and you're a victim. You blame everybody else for your problems. Oh, it's those damn Zionists. <laughs> no, it's not them. They're just taking advantage of your apathy. They're taking advantage of the stupidity and the corruption of your leaders. And I'll prove it to you. Next slide, please. This, <laughs> this is the reality, OK? We have, life is limited by these divine laws. You obey, you stay within this perimeter, you're OK. The leaders are supposed to keep you within this Don't get gray water here. It's either clean or it's unclean. Next slide. First principle, the fear of God. These are Muhammad. These are his words. My words cannot be changed, nor am I indeed unjust to the slaves from the Quran. Therefore, fear him in this world and the world to come, in the seen and the unseen. Since whoever fears him, God grants him redemption for sins and favors him with great reward. This person is highly successful. This nation is highly successful. Fear Allah saves man from his wrath, wrath, anger. But this goes more than anger. Wrath is a degree above anger. All right? It's like a Category 5 hurricane. His punishment, his anger. Punishment. Where is the God of Muhammad? Punishment in Baghdad. 
It's happened before, didn't it? 700 years ago, 800 years ago, when the Mongols went there. That's a whole different story. Why did Genghis Khan allow his sons to destroy Islam 900, however, 800 years ago? Because the leaders in Baghdad were arrogant. They were arrogant. And we talk about the golden age. Is that really a golden age when your leaders are arrogant? Huh? I don't think so. When Khalid came out of Jerusalem to meet Umar, what happened? Umar dismissed him from his position as five-star general, didn't he? Because he was arrogant, wearing all his fine clothes and his fine horse and looking like another king of the earth. We'll talk about king of the earth later. Arrogance, punishment. That's what happened to Baghdad. Next slide. Fear, seen, unseen, success, walk. This person alone. Remember these key words. Next slide, please. Conclusions from principle one. When established through tafakur, contemplation, the result is benefit. Activates the positive aspects of spiritual laws. Humility and health, they rule. Humility brings health. It leads to right decision-making and right action. It's holistic, toleric, sustainable, far-sighted, eco-social friendly. Is what's taking place in, that, in this country right now eco-social friendly? I don't think so. The good sheikh uh, talk, talked about uh, some principles of identifying the enemy of Allah and how they treat the aboriginal tribes. Huh? How is this country treat, treating the aboriginals here? It's displacing them from their land, is it not? Sure it is. It's not granting them their rights. Your leaders are not granting rights. That's a sign. It's a metaphysical ground upon which all responsible decisions are made. Fear of Allah. That's, and that's all there is. You do not fear Allah. You forget to fear Allah. And this is, uh, it, you, you do not get this, you do not get responsible decisions being made. It's that simple. You don't have to be a PhD to figure this out. Newspaper boy will do. When not established in the heart, the result is harm. Activates the negative aspects of spiritual law. Pride and corruption rule. The wrong decisions, wrong action, irresponsible, everything falls. You can look like you're successful. You can look like you're the golden age of Islam, just like Baghdad did, and Allah will send in the hammer. The hammer of God. And the son of Genghis Khan said that, I am the judgment of God. Were you obedient to your God, this would not have happened. He said this in the masjid in Baghdad. This is a principle. I'm reminding you. Next slide, please. Second principle, obedience to God. Do not show slackness in obedience. Slackness. Inshallah. Yeah, I'll get it done tomorrow. Never mind, someone else will do it. Yeah. Slackness. This is a principle. You cannot be slack. You cannot be slack. Allah has revealed the book for your teaching. Again, these are not my words. These are the words of the Prophet. Wahad Salam made the right path clear for your guidance so that truth can be distinguished. What is this discernment? So you can tell right from wrong. If you're slack, if you're lazy, if you don't do your research, you will not be able to discern what is good and what is not good. You cannot discern benefit, benef what is beneficial from harm. Why? <clears throat> because you don't understand what you're doing. An example, in this country, Everybody's getting immunized. You're following. <laughs> you, this is germ warfare. Why don't you know about it? Because your leaders are apathetic. Or they're getting kickback, Alibaba backdoor payment from the drug companies, including your doctors. 
these immunizations are all contaminated by, by viruses, animal viruses, which have been manufactured in biological warfare laboratories. That's a fact. I'm not making this up, and I can back it up. So when you don't, if you're apathetic and you say, oh, okay, yes, yes, oh, doctor, you think that's a good, okay, good, we'll do, we'll immunize all them against HPV. AIDS is man-made epidemic. It's a man-made epidemic. Bird flu, man-made. <laughs> They're made by the war departments. I'm not joking. I'm not joking. You people, your kids are getting sick because of this problem. They, 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 your, your leaders can't discern truth from falsehood. Benefit from harm. Next slide, please. Key words here, slackness, truth. Distinguished from falsehood, favor, his enemy, okay? Favor, what are we talking about? This is God's grace. <coughs> Why do you need the discernment? You need the discernment so that you can discern who is the enemy. If you don't know your enemy, you can't fight him. And you'll invite him into your house. And that's what Muslims, and especially Muslim leaders, have done for a long, long time. This is not, this is not the beginning of it. This is the end of it. Live with insight. You see? What's this conference about? Gaining insight. Next slide, please. So this passage, again, <coughs> uh, teaches us that the faculty of discernment actively segregates benefit from harm. This faculty is only acquired as a result of obedience. If you don't obey Allah, you cannot discern. If you don't obey God, you cannot discern right from wrong. You have some elementary free throw, we all have that, okay? But I'm talking about things that go beyond the elementary free throw, the elementary common sense. Obedience to God is the direct result of fearing God. So if you don't fear God, you can't obey him. You won't. If you forget about Akira, if you forget about the hereafter, if you forget about the grave, you will not fear Allah and you will not obey. It's that simple. <coughs> Obedience demand assiduous, do not be slack, attention. This is called diligence, diligent labor, action. Not talk, not conferences, it means work. Acquisition of knowledge requires due diligence and study, which leads to knowing and avoiding God's enemies. And God's enemies are your enemies. If your leaders are busy fla waving flags, do they have time to be diligent? No. It's all a circus act. That's what the Democratic and Republican conventions are. It's a bloody circus act. That's all it is. Next slide, please. Conclusion, slackness, laziness, and gaining knowledge, no due diligence causes a lack of discernment. You cannot tell right from wrong because one is ignorant, incompetent. Cannot, you don't want a brain surgeon who's a foot doctor, now do you? You don't want a foot doctor operating on the brain, right? So you cannot be obedient, you cannot be on the right path because you cannot effectively serve the truth. When you are ignorant, when you are not diligent, you cannot serve the truth. It's that simple. You don't need to be a PhD to figure this out. Was, was the prophet a PhD? Were the Sahabas PhDs? Then why are we worshiping PhDs today? Huh? Worship means to obey. That's what it means. We've thrown away real, real knowledge and we've taken the Western substitute. If you do not serve the truth, you do not have the ability to be obedient. The result is harm will surely come. It, it cannot be avoided. Next slide, please. Harm. Next slide. Third principle, the remembrance of God. 
is sitting around saying, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, 30,000 times, is that the remembrance of God? Some people think so. The best remembrance of God is sitting around talking about Allah, like we're doing here. We're talking about the things of God. This is better than prayer. And I know so because the prophet said so. Am I not right, Sheikh? Yes, the prophet said so. That a group of people sitting around and talking about the things of Allah is better than prayer. Allah's command is supreme over the people. This is authentic authority, but people cannot command God. You have Christians over there saying, in the name of God, we call us that, that, this, that, the next thing, curse upon these people. They're practicing magic. The jinn will comply. The jinn will jump right in, and they'll do something to make them think that they're all powerful. And yeah, it's true. All power comes from Allah. So do delusions. The delusions come from Allah too. He said he's going to send them. And they come to people who do not obey. They come to people who do not fear. They come to people who do not remember correctly. If you are ignorant, how can you remember Allah correctly? If you can, cannot discern that your enemy has infiltrated you and is causing harm to your children, making you all sick through his immunization program, how can you serve Allah? <laughs> you can't. You can think you're serving Allah, but until you stand up and say, no, I'm not taking that immunization shot, and no, you're not going to give it to my kids, and no, Mr. Prime Minister, this is why, look at this medical study here, the hell with your medical association, they are wrong, and they are lying to you. If you don't have the courage like that to speak as the Sahaba spoke, and to criticize as the Sahaba spoke, you're just going to be apathetic and serve who? Allah? No, you'll be serving his enemies. That's what's happening now in the Ummah. This Malaysia is the flagship of the Ummah, right? Is it not? Sure it is. Okay, next slide, please. Key words, power belongs to Allah. Grace, we want Allah's grace. We do not want Iblis's grace. Allah will let us, Iblis, give it to us, but we need God's grace if we want protection. Remember, seen and unseen, the Tawheed, we need to think with a whole picture, a synthesis from beginning to end. Sincerity, no slackness, diligence, hard work. Hard work, not a little bit, not inshallah, master of all. Humility, fear, sense of shame, right footing, walk, discernment, insight. Hereafter, the unseen, command is supreme, law, it cannot be circumvented. Next slide, please. It is the remembrance of Allah which encourages you to undertake the striving. Once the Holy Prophet came out of his house, he saw some people engaged in prayer, and the others saw them sitting in a circle talking to faith. He joined the latter group, and he said, what these people are doing is better. Is better. Next slide, please. But talking is insufficient. You have to turn that. What, what the purpose of the talk is to decide what is your action going to be. Yeah? The Chinese don't get together just to talk. They get together to talk and decide what their next action is going to be. That's what they do. Conclusion. The establishment of this right footing of remembrance in a person's life is a spiritually sober person chooses treasure in heaven rather than goods and chattels of deception with materialism and consumer, consumerism. I know people rather run the Sunway Pyramid than to listen to the truth. The Sunway Pyramid is a, a shopping center. It, it's, it is a place that's filled with idolatry, shirk. That's what it is. You'll have to answer for it when you get to the grave. 
Why are you not home praying, madam, on Friday afternoons? You've gone to Sunway Pyramid. Why? Well, it's, it's such a nice place, and there's so many things for my kids to do. So many distractions there, isn't there? Distractions from what? The remembrance of Allah. They humbly remember the power of Allah, seek his face, initially out of fear, later out of both fear and love, out of the experience of guidance. The experience of guidance. The experience of guidance, not just talking about it. You have to experience and have confirmed in your own life's experience that Allah is in fact guiding you. I have that experience. I have that experience. I can speak primarily about this from that I can give you many examples. Those who sincerely remember Allah live their lives for the hereafter in so doing they discipline themselves to diligently discern. Diligently. What is ultimately and absolutely beneficial, what is ethical and moral in the here and now. They live ethically and morally for the here and now. And they live so with intelligence and knowing what is going on. They are aware of current events. Next slide, please. So the three principles, fear, obedience, remembrance. You avoid the inverse effects. You avoid this thing. All right. He's going to reach in there. Your leaders are supposed to be here at the top to prevent him from getting inside the bowl, right? And they're there to prevent you from jumping outside the bowl. If you want to jump outside the bowl and you rebel enough, they'll say, okay, go, go on, exile. That's what happened to Kabir, exiled. And who's outside the bowl? This fellow. And he's got a lot of little fellows with him, a lot of little cats. And I know people, from primary experience, they'd rather go and play with the cat. And I've heard them say they'd rather play with the cat forever in hell, too. I've heard them say this face to face. That's how much they enjoy playing with the cat. That is strong delusion. Next slide, please. OK, this is peace and security in Palestine 100 years ago. That's what Palestine used to look like. What happened? If you stay with me, we'll go to the next uh, PowerPoint, and uh, we'll start to talk about that. What happened to Palestine? This began a long time ago. Now, I'm going to get into my second lecture a little bit ahead of time here, because I've got so much material to, to, to dwell on. And uh, uh, how much time do I have now? Say again. How much time? 50 minutes? OK. All right, I'll try to take this to no longer than 10.30 then. All right. Now, the origin, basis, and continuum of the old world order. That's what the new world order is. It's the old world order in new terms. There's nothing new about it, except uh, the latest fashion. Yeah. Next slide, please. Now here, there's the queen. Here, what is this? That's the Chinese dragon. This is a freshly minted gold coin. Uh, I think it's worth about 50,000 uh, uh, British pounds, something like that. What's this thing? Well, this is where the serpent used to be worshipped in Palestine. This fellow worshipped in this place, the serpent cult. Now, you have a, a place here in KL called the Batu Caves. Look familiar? Huh? <laughs> Looks familiar, doesn't it? Why? Because it's the house of reprobate jinn whom these people are worshiping as gods. 